You know you're getting old when you're excited about the new stainless steel pasta pot that you just bought. Seriously, I've been doing this too long, man. Like at some point, it's going to be crazy. Like the zombies community is going to see all the YouTubers that they've been watching for years with like little kids running around in the background of their videos and stuff. Like it's going to be mayhem. I'm not ready for it. No. <laughs> So this video is a warning for you, okay? This is actually deathly serious. Pass the pots, be gone. I need to have a moment with you real quick here. So I saw some comments on yesterday's video saying things like the following. I haven't really been paying attention to COD for a few years now, but seeing this video of Milo being genuinely excited about this mystery has just really reignited something in me. Stop. Let me read you another one. Milo will never fail to get me hyped for anything. Love these videos so much. Another one. Can't lie, even though I'm bummed that COD is where it is at right now, these interactive Easter eggs and correlation to zombies has me sitting upright. And especially this one, saying Milo is making me more excited for this game than I've been for any game in a while. Love you, Ruffle. Stop. Stop. Cut it out. <laughs> Listen, I love you guys, and I love that we share this wonderful bond which brings us so close to one another where I can be the biggest nerd in the world in a given video such as that one and you guys can really resonate with that content and our excitement can kind of be contagious between each other, right? I love it. But there's something that I need to say in order to maintain my integrity with you guys and to make sure that nobody here is getting themselves in a situation that ends up with hurt feelings and bad vibes, okay? The simple fact of the matter, he says into the microphone, the fact of the matter, the fact of the matter, is that I made a bunch of videos leading up to Black Ops 4, for instance, about how excited I was for that game. And look how launch turned out. And then later on, we got Cold War and Cold War was fantastic and it was a really good year, I thought, but we then had the build up to Vanguard, right? Yeah, remember that? Vanguard was a real thing. That wasn't a fever dream. That wasn't like some kind of like mental lapse that you had, like you slipped into a coma and that happened and then you came back and were like, yeah, that wasn't real. No, Vanguard was a real thing. And in the build up to Vanguard, I made an entire story video. I put genuinely like over $10,000 into making that video. I hired people to work on the script, to work on animations, to work on art, to work on all sorts of stuff. Editing, obviously, Joey Conway, big salute. But we put all this energy, right, into making this video. And at the end of the video, what do I do? I literally teed up Vanguard Zombies. The end of the video is like, and that's where the story continues in Vanguard Zombies. Yeah, bro. Oh my God. I probably sold so many copies of the game from making that video because people in the comments were like, yo, I wasn't really vibing with the Dark Ether story, but I watched this video and I'm into it now and I need to buy Vanguard to see where it goes. Like, how embarrassing. <laughs> but I can put genuinely two full months of work into a video like that with an entire suite of other people also working on it. And our project ends up convincing people to buy Call of Duty Vanguard. Oh my God. Why did I do that? Ah! I know why I did it. I did it because I love the zombie storyline. I love making content for you guys. I love telling stories, right? I love being that nerd, the always sunny meme of the background behind me and being like, this is where you connect the dots and making an entire blackboard presentation and solving ciphers and uncovering mysteries and secrets and all of those things. I love those things. And you guys love those things too, I think. And we've found miraculously, like let's just be grateful to the universe for a second. We have found a corner of the internet where we can be completely authentic with one another and talk about things that are so arcane, so specific that in any other context, you'd be getting weird looks from people in the room, right? But I can stand here looking you dead in the eyes and go, yeah, so when, when Alex Mason was involved with the assassination of JFK, like I can say something like that and you'll be like, mm-hmm, yep. Uh-huh. Yeah, exactly. And and Milo, don't forget this other bit as well, where at the end of the game, you see this. Like, we can have that kind of conversation out in the real world, like insane asylum territory. And I love it, right? I, I find so much joy in that. And that's something that I was even saying on Twitter yesterday, for those of you that follow me on Twitter, or X, as it's now called, apparently. I was saying, like, I, I feel like when zombies kind of wraps up eventually like when call of duty just goes bankrupt or whatever happens in the future i feel like i could make these exact style of videos but just about ancient history like we could just talk about the egyptians 
for years, right? The ancient Egyptians and all of the technology that they had and the knowledge that they had, and we can just dig in and be like, this is so cool, right? Or modern history, like we could dig into the Vietnam War, the Cold War, like all these sorts of really, really fascinating bits of modern history. We could talk about UFOs and conspiracy theories and all those sorts of things and dig into the mysteries and the secrets there. We could do true crime, right? Like there's so much transferable skill, I feel like, in what I do and transferable interest in what many of you guys are interested in that could work in any of those areas and more. And and that's amazing and it's wonderful and it's something that I'm super grateful for and I'm so thrilled to be able to do this sort of thing for you guys, like, as my job. That is just, like, I couldn't ask for more. But as part of that, it would be a moral failing, I think, on my part to pretend to you at any point that every single thing in the future was always going to be sunshine and rainbows and it was always going to be just like lovely daisies and daffodils and there was never going to be any situations where you should maybe second guess yourself or you should maybe double check that you actually want to purchase something or be 100% confident that that upcoming game is actually going to be good before you buy it. Like something that I've I've always had a kind of uh, a complex relationship with is the whole pre-orders thing in video games because I see this and I've seen this genuinely probably tens of thousands of times over the years in my videos. In fact, that's probably an underestimate, probably hundreds of thousands of times, like across 500 million views. I think genuinely there's there's those sorts of numbers that are being hit here where people will say to me, I watched this video and it made me pre-order the game, or I wasn't interested and now I am, or th- just anything in that area, in that direction. And so that's a lot of responsibility for me because yeah, I'm just nerding out, but I'm nerding out, but implicitly we are talking about and celebrating someone's product. Like, Call of Duty is a product made by a business that just wants to make money. I'm here and I'm making a fun video about, like, a conspiracy theory because I'm interested in a story, but the story is attached to a product and you are a consumer buying that someone else's product. I obviously don't benefit if you guys buy Call of Duty. If you buy the game and you stay interested in it, then sure. If I make more content about that, then it's win-win. But I'm certainly not getting any kickback from all the copies of Call of Duty that I'm selling. And Activision certainly isn't sponsoring me. So as someone that sort of wants to be as impartial as possible and maintain that integrity with you guys, I want to give you a completely transparent warning here. Yeah, I can make a video like the one I made yesterday about Modern Warfare 3, and I can try and find ways to be excited. It turns out now that a lot of the stuff that I was talking about in that video that I was looking at through the zombies lens is not zombies related. It seems to be just campaign stuff. It seems to be a lot more boring. But in the video, that didn't matter because it was about speculation. It was about intrigue. It was about trying to connect the dots in an incomplete set of data in front of us, right? The full picture was not presented. We just had a little kind of slither of it, like the shadow of the picture. And we can analyze that and go, oh, okay, this could be this thing that I'm really interested in, right? Or that thing that I'm really interested in. You can see the best of it. But often, reality doesn't meet those aspirational expectations. And so with Modern Warfare 3, I feel just very complicated about the idea of making videos that get people hyped up for a game that I'm not confident is going to be good for them to purchase. And that's not me saying, I think Modern Warfare 3 is going to suck. And that's not me saying, like, I know that Modern Warfare 3 is like a bad game or that I know that the zombies mode in it is not going to be fun or anything on those lines. Okay. I don't know, but that's the problem. I don't know if I knew and it was going to be good, then yeah, I'm much more confident in that situation saying, hell yeah, jump into the game. It's a great idea because you're going to get a lot of value out of it and it's going to be a really good time, right? You're going to have a lot of fun with your friends. You're going to learn a lot about this cool story that we all love, etc. But I don't have that confidence because I don't know. It's a mystery. And so anyone that watches my videos and pre-orders the game off the back of that terrifies me because then it's my fault somewhat. Obviously, you're responsible for your own decisions here. I'm not the one that's actually controlling your purchases, but I'm at least part of the apparatus of promotion of the game. But it's insane. Why am I promoting something that over the years, so many times, has burned you and me and burned our interest in it and really betrayed our faith in the product and our faith in the team and our faith in the story, right? And it's 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 a it's a nuanced one and it's a complicated one and it's something that I wanted to talk about here 
to, to air this out a little bit because the majority of YouTubers, and this is not me trying to shade anyone in particular here, this is just me saying that the nature of the game is that it doesn't make sense to have these sorts of conversations because either you're just getting in the flow and you're making that kind of promotional content or you're probably the sort of person that just like hates on everything, right? There's a lot of channels out there that just like hate everything that Activision does and they become kind of one track in that and it gets a lot of views and it's great. And that's fine, right? Like to each their own. But I'm in this very strange position where I've been doing this for such a long time that it no longer necessarily makes sense for me to be entirely thinking one way or the other and I think that we've built up enough of a relationship over the years where I can honestly say to you, I would love for this game to be good. And I would love, I would love so much to be able to make videos like that conspiracy video that I just made every day, bro. I would love that. There is genuinely little on the planet that brings me more joy than being a complete weird nerd and showcasing that to all of you guys and bringing you into this little inner circle of crazy conspiracy theorist, story-loving, Easter egg-solving nutters. Like, I love it so much. But in doing that, I am promoting a product from a business that wants to try and extract as much money out of people as possible. And it's not my business even. So like, it's a weird place to stand. And I wanted to just talk about that with you guys because by talking about it, we can all be more on the same page. This isn't me saying in my next video, I'm not going to be excited about the game, right? Because obviously also I'm in a difficult position where when I'm really in my flow and I'm having fun making a theory video or whatever, like in that video yesterday, 0% of me, both from a business perspective and a personal perspective, wants to add a disclaimer of being like, oh, and by the way, if this video is making you excited, stop that right now. It's a really bad idea. And you should totally just cancel your credit card and cancel your pre-order and just go and touch grass. That makes no sense because number one, that's not the point of the video. Number two, it's going to waste people's time who are already feeling that way. Number three, it makes me sound like I've got this weird complex about making sure that even if I make a very minorly positive video about Call of Duty, that I have to sort of like ram the negative down everyone's throats at the same time. And it, it, it's just not the way that those things should be. And then also simultaneously for me, like if I'm finding something to be excited about and to be hyped up about, I know for a fact that you guys don't want me to be basically cancelling my own excitement, right? Because then it's no fun for everybody. So this isn't a video of me saying, I'm never going to be excited for Call of Duty ever again, and I'm never going to make an excited theory video ever again, and I'm never going to allow myself to get swept up in some cool marketing ever again, because I love that stuff. I love it. But I just want to post this one singular video out into the universe to say, all of that can be true, but at the same time, please remember that I can get excited about marketing all day long, but the product needs to speak for itself. And you need to make a very calculated decision about how you interact with the product, whether it's through purchasing it. I mean, it happens in other media too, streaming it, renting it, borrowing it from a friend, like all those things, right? And I just don't want you guys to get in a situation where you're like, man, Milo got me so hyped up and this is the result I got. And it's Vanguard, right? To this day, like that story video that I made, one of my favorite videos that I've ever worked on, if not the favorite video I've ever worked on, I was so proud of it. I still am. I think it's it's a, a, a masterpiece in many ways from my perspective. And it literally tees up Vanguard. Oh my God, how embarrassing. So I just wanted to get this out there as like, a, if you're excited, stop it, but stop it for the right reasons. Don't just stop it because I'm being a negative Nancy. Stop it because I'm genuinely trying to be conscientious about this and retain the integrity that I think I've built up over the years in telling you guys the truth. Like a lot of people when Black Ops 4 came out were just sort of skirting around the issues and they were focusing on the positives and all that sort of stuff. And that's okay, right? But I didn't feel like I could do that in good conscience completely without also airing out the fact that I felt like there was a real betrayal of user trust and consumer trust in that launch window. I don't think I necessarily navigated it perfectly, right? I'm human. I got emotionally sort of uh, burned in many ways. And I felt like I needed to express that and showcase the fact that it wasn't all sunshine and rainbows, right? But then again, like Vanguard came out and I was like, bro, I've built a career essentially talking about this IP that I think in some instances really excels and is beautiful and is wonderful and is awesome and is so epic and fun. Like Cold War, I think was a really good year to be a Zombies fan and the viral campaign for that as well with Porn Takes Porn and all that stuff. So cool. But at the same time, there are years like Vanguard and it would it would completely betray any trust that I've built for you, with you, right? To be like, yeah, it's always positive and Modern Warfare 3 is going to be the best game ever. 
Like, no. I don't know what Modern Warfare 3 is going to be. I'm literally making an excited video about an image, and that is not the same thing as being excited about the game itself. Because, I mean, we've all seen this countless times. Halo 5, another example, right? You can get excited for a marketing campaign, and then you can get the game itself and be like, oh, it's something else entirely. And granted, I love Halo 5, but I love Halo 5 in spite of the marketing that they did, which I didn't even see, right? I had my own expectation created from basically just playing the previous games and that was it. But a lot of other people had different expectations based on marketing. And then when I got into the game, I was like, yeah, cool, this is Halo. And when they got into the game, they were like, well, this doesn't meet my expectations, so it sucks. And I'm creating expectations by making these videos. And I'm just trying to temper those a little bit to make sure that nobody has a Halo 5 ever happen again because that happened with Vanguard for us all. And that sucked. And I don't want things to suck. I want you to be happy. And I want to be able to be jazzed about these things. But a video like this is needed every once in a while. Cool. Okay. See you soon. Bye.